Hello Aquarius, welcome to Dove and Serpent Tarot. My name is Paul. If Aquarius is your sun, moon, or rising sign, this is your reading. Please hit the like button, leave a comment, consider subscribing to the channel, especially if this reading resonates with you. And if there is anything you would like me to pray over, or meditate upon, or send positive energy toward, please let me know. All right. Now, this is going to be a general reading, so try to be open and receptive to whatever may come through during our time together. I am merely the messenger. And I ask that you connect directly with each of these cards and use your own intuition to take you beyond the details that I might provide. And remember, Aquarius, that the most important part of any tarot reading is you. And we start with a two of swords. Now this is interesting. It could be talking about a decision uh, that you're going to be making. I don't know if there's something already pending that you're trying to decide on. Uh, with the Two of Swords, I kind of feel as if we're having difficulty deciding on something. But let's, yeah, see, there's some difficulty too. Um, interesting. We've got this Devil Energy, the Sun Energy. A couple of Court cards here. Really in, ooh. Okay. Interesting. We've got this. There is this very, very big opportunity before you. And I feel like we're just trying to get some sort of confirmation. We're trying to, um, we're trying to figure out exactly what to do. We're trying to make this decision, I think. Okay. Um, it could be something that you're you're just sensing now. I mean, after the reading we did for you yesterday, um, this seems kind of right on schedule. But let's select the mystery card, bonus card, confirmation card. This is one random card from the Smith Waite Tarot. And we are just going to set it down over here. We'll put Francine right on top. We're not going to look at that card until the very end. And hopefully it will tie everything together and give us the confirmation that we need. Okay. If at any point during the reading you, you feel like you know what that card is, I want you to put your prediction in the comments below. Uh, it's kind of a group exercise here. Try to see if we can uh, collectively raise our vibrations, tap into spirit, tap into source, and start uh, discerning this mystery card together, right? But first, uh, let's look around the room here. Major, major, major. Very interesting. These are very strong major arcana energies. We have the devil, we have the sun, we have judgment. Um... We have some fire energy coming at the very end, so I feel like this decision is going to happen and it's going to result in action. We see some water energies over here. We see our air energy here. And we see our earth energy here. Everything's pretty much uh, kind of clustered with its own element, right? We see air and then the earth is kind of together, the water's kind of together, even the fire is together, because this judgment card, uh, final judgment, the eon, this is a pure fire energy right here. Okay, so it is going to take a tremendous uh, effort of will to get through this doorway. And this is very, very big. I think it is a life-changing kind of situation that we are trying to figure out trying to make sense of it, trying to plan it, trying to decide how to deal with it, uh, what action to take. Well, with the two, um, you're somebody who's very logical. I think you you typically make your pros and cons list, you know. Um, you like to think things through. You like to be thorough. I think this situation, if nothing else, it's teaching you something. You hear my cat there. Um, teaching you to use your intuition. The two of swords here, it seems like it's an intellectual decision, but it's really not. Since we also have the seven of swords, right? Now, both of these cards are ruled by the moon. And to me, this seems like the futility of trying to come up with a logical, rational decision is leading you to trust yourself, trust your instinct, trust your gut, trust your the ruler of this card, the moon energy, the lunar energy. Uh, so we have to tap into that. 
in order to really get some clarity on what to do with this situation, right? I feel like this is really big. I feel like it's all kind of, it's all kind of coming together right now and we've, we may be feeling a little overwhelmed by it. Okay. Now with the seven of swords, we do have to do our um, affirmation card. So for that, we're going to use the language of flowers. And this is just something to hopefully pull us out of this overthinking uh, seven of swords energy. It is the calla lily rejuvenation, awaken, reawaken, and then stand stronger. Reawaken. Interesting. Interesting. Um, I wonder if this situation that we're talking about, there's the calla lily. I wonder if this situation that's going on right now is it, it, it I wonder if it is kind of a reawakening. Um, it's kind of one of the key words I say about this card. The eon, the judgment, the rebirth, reawakening, baptism by fire. I say all those things every time. Uh, so this really could be um, a situation that not only is it a big opportunity, I think, for your physical, mortal life, you know, but I think that this might be reawakening you to your own strength and power, right? Because right after this, we see the two of wands. So it's almost like, well, why don't we see the two of wands before? Showing that we're making the decision of will to go through this doorway and level up our lives, whatever this thing is, we're, we're going with it. We're taking advantage of this opportunity and we're going to utilize this situation and maximize its potential and its offering and its blessing. But no, we see the two of wands after the fact. So I kind of wonder if there is a a bit of a byproduct of this opportunity, and that is it restores your confidence and your faith and your trust in your own power, your own decisions. And if it really gives you this, this two of wands feeling, when all, all is said and done, that you can accomplish anything, right? This is a real strength. This is a real ownership of life. So I think maybe we're reawakening to our own power here, okay? As a kind of just a byproduct of what this big opportunity, this big situation is. I think it's all coming together very soon. I think it is life-changing. This is, to me, this card is life-changing. The Eon or Judgment, Rebirth, Reawakening. But we have to learn to trust ourselves in this situation. Okay? Um, and this is going to be, the air energy right here is really the the most important thing that we have to deal with. Now, how do we deal with that? Well, I think this water energy is really important because if the air is the intellectual, the water is the emotional. If the air is our beliefs and our thought process, then the water is our values, what we truly desire deep down, okay? And here is the Knight of Cups. This is the way forward. And the way forward, I think, is you um, realizing that this is a gift accepting it as long as of course we have this three of cups in the environment right as long as this opportunity or this big situation this life-changing event uh, resonates with your core beliefs and values with your understanding of what happiness means to you right we'll get to this card but first the knight of cups this card is accepting the gift, right? Kind of looks like they might be offering a gift, right? And it, it's both ways. This card is usually uh, the uh, giving of love and affection, making an offering, but then also accepting. Okay, it's that reciprocating kind of energy. And I think this is the way forward with acceptance, love, and gratitude. Uh, because in the environment, we've got this Three of Cups which means that you have the understanding of the, the process of creating your happiness in your life. That's what the Three of Cups is. It's, this is the understanding of the process, not the process itself. But I think that this is showing, and again, the, the, all the cards are really clustered together. I think this is showing that um, this opportunity is a gift and it is in harmony with your 
highest ideal of, <clears throat> of good, of happiness, it really resonates with your core beliefs, your core values, right? It resonates with your understanding of the process of happiness for you, okay? <clears throat> so to me, this is a confirmation that this is a wonderful opportunity and we should, even if we can't really understand exactly what's going on, we can't really, maybe there's some doubt. Maybe the seven of swords is that, you know, this seems too good to be true. Or we can't understand how it's happening or why or what the next step would be. It seems like we're being advised to accept it, welcome it, and reawaken our power. And this will give us the next step. This will allow us to, um, to know what the next step is when the time comes. Now, uh, underneath everything, we have the turning point card, the Queen of Pentacles. This card is the, the energy that assesses the past and understands how to kind of translate it to the future, right? Um, <clears throat> this figure is looking at the long winding road behind them distilling the wisdom, reflecting on it, assimilating the lessons, the teachings, the wisdom of that experience. And then turning to the future and say, how can I utilize all of this wisdom to make the most out of the long and winding road that comes next? Okay. Uh, this card is also, has a bit of a warning in there, and this is I don't, I don't know if this applies right now. We'll have to see. Um, taking a look at the past and assuming that the long and winding road in front of us is going to be just like the one in the past, right? It's almost like all that stuff happened. It's just going to happen again in the future, right? And I don't think that is... Um, I don't think that's a way, a good way of looking at things right now. And I don't know that, that that energy applies to you in this moment. But with the Seven of Swords, it makes me wonder, right? It makes me wonder if we were looking, um, if we're looking back at the past and we see this devil energy. Now, the devil energy usually is very positive energy. But I wonder if, in this case, if it is kind of... Um, Perhaps a history, because this the Queen of Pentacles is kind of looking at the past, and what it sees is that devil card. So looking at the past, maybe we see that we really put all of our eggs in something. We really devoted our entire being to something. And we were obsessed with something that maybe didn't quite work out so well. And so now the Queen can look to the future and say, mm -mm, I know how that's going to go. And that's what I mean, that we can't assume that the future is going to be identical to the past. Right? They say, you know, history repeats itself, right? Um, so I'm, I'm wondering about this devil energy that's in the recent past. If this was a uh, kind of an obsession or a fixation on something or a devotion to something that didn't really materialize. Okay? If we were very wrapped up in, if we had really all of our energy devoted to something and it didn't quite turn out the way we wanted to. Okay. So I see that the Queen of, of Pentacles is kind of looking towards something like that in the past. And that might be giving us the hesitation right now, the little bit of the uh, mental um, confusion or the overthinking that we're talking about with the Swords cards. Okay. Um, but the kind of saving grace here is the sun card at the very top, right? This is the solar energy. Now the sun illumines both past and future and can shine right through this air, right through to the queen of pentacles. So this is kind of saying, look, let's raise our consciousness up, up to this solar level. And be aware that, yeah, you might be kind of um, expecting the worst from this opportunity because of something that didn't work out in the past, right? So the Sun card leaves no shadows. The Sun card provides absolute clarity, and we need to raise ourselves up to this level 
so that we could see the past and understand. We can see the present about how we might be hesitating, we might be apprehensive to take advantage of this situation. And then look to the future to say, hey, it's, it's not going, it's uncertain. It hasn't been decided yet. Just because it happened a certain way in the past doesn't mean it's going to happen that way again. Right? And perhaps it all does hinge on us being open and receptive. Right? So I like the sun card. I feel like this is kind of illuminating everything for you. And if we focus our efforts here, if we meditate on this solar energy, then we'll be able to see every kind of hidden aspect of this. I think this is a very big situation. I think the sun card here also is kind of the hint or the message from the divine that says, hey, you are so close to your greatest goal, right? So close to your destiny. I like to think of the sun card as a star, as our very own personal star, right? So we, we think of a star or the star card, right? Way out in the distance, your destiny, your star, it's way up there in the heavens. It seems far away. Well, now look how close it is. It's, it's up close and personal. We can feel it. We can see it. We can unite with it. Right? We can attain this goal. It's within our grasp now. It's within our reach. And I think that's the message as well with the sun, the sun energy. This is your highest ideal. This is the biggest. I think this is really big. And I think this situation, it's all coming down to this, this big moment, this decision that we need to make to walk through this doorway and claim this energy. Let's go to the path of the serpent. Look at all these cards. The nine of pentacles, for one thing. You are the type of person that wants to have um, evidence, right? You want to be able to feel something, to hold it in your hand like a little horse. Um, to know that it's real. You're not, um, you're not a gullible person. You're not somebody who is easily convinced of things without some sort of tangible certainty. You want to be able to, you know, feel it. You want to be able to hold it to know it's real, right? And this, I think, is kind of a little bit, um, makes it a little bit difficult to just kind of be open and receptive and, and trust the, the the flow of the energy and trust the universe. And, um, but I think this card is also saying that, look, you, you require some sort of evidence. You want something that you can measure, right? That you can uh, confirm through your senses. And you're going to get that, right? This card here is in your general energy. And the Nine of Pentacles is all about gain. It's all about the visible signs of progress. You're going to be able to see through your physical senses that this opportunity is benefiting you, is good for you, is helping to build you up, restore your life, whether it's financial, physical, whether it's emotional, mental, spiritual, whatever this opportunity is. And because this is an eon card, it's a new eon. You're bringing your entire life through this doorway. So it's not just work. It's not just your personal relationships. It's not just your spiritual life. It's everything. It's all of it, okay? And I think that we, we've got this Three of Cups in the environment. And this is, again, it's, there's multiple meanings. First and foremost, this is the idea that you're going to celebrate, okay? Uh, that it's going to feel really good. That you're going to understand that this situation is the process by which you're going to generate this happiness, this really, this true satisfaction in your life. Okay. Because again, the three of cups is understanding the process of creating this perfect happiness. And this is in your environment. So now you see that the environment you're in is conducive to this process, right? So it's time for us to interact with this environment, with this particular situation, this big opportunity, whatever it might be. This big, uh, you know, spiritual activation, this big leveling up, right? Now, the Three of Cups is also talking, because it's in the environment, it talks about the people in your life, the relationships that you have, 
Okay. And when we take that also with the Knight of Cups, this is about appreciating others. This is about showing your love and appreciation for the people around you. Okay. No one is an island. No one is completely alone. Even if we feel that way, even if we don't interact with people on a daily basis, there are people everywhere behind every process. There's people, right? Um, just the fact that you're watching this video, there are people that made your phone, that designed your phone at least. I mean, robots probably made it. Uh, there are people. I'm a people. There are people at YouTube, right? There are. We're all connected in some way, even if it's not physically in your presence. Um, you know, someone that you can, again, experience through, um, through your senses directly. You know, it's it's over the internet, right? Uh, so this, I think, is really about recognizing the interconnectedness. And maybe you do have a big family. Maybe you, you know, maybe there are a lot of people in your environment. Either way. This card, these two, um, are about recognizing that and showing your appreciation for that, but also letting the love come in from those people. So I don't think there's any blockage here, and that's the, let's keep it that way, right? Let's keep that open flow of, of communication, of love energy back and forth, okay? Because I think you're going you're gonna to need that uh, as we go through this doorway. And this is the big obstacle. This is the big difficulty. It's in the position, really, of what we don't want. Because it is a baptism by fire. Right? It's going to be uncomfortable, probably. And for this, we have to do a divine doorway. Um, oracle card or affirmation card, whatever you want to call these. So let's do this and see if we can get a little hint as to the nature of this this big opportunity. It's a big transition. It is a, a big leveling up. On the other side of that doorway is your future. Sacred Lotus. Compassion in action, the chosen tool. I see now the lotus in your spirit's jewel. Interesting. Compassion. The sacred lotus compassion. Yeah. Well, that kind of reminds me of these two that we just talked about. Right? The showing, the, the keeping open that channel of love between ourselves and our environment, right? Um, which is kind of a, a compassion, right? Um, so I like that. I wonder if this, is, um, if this is an opportunity, whatever this situation is, an opportunity to further connect with people, to connect more deeply with people. Okay, maybe it's a big promotion, maybe you're moving, maybe it's some kind of a spiritual leveling up that really opens you to these deeper connections. Okay. But what it does do is it awakens your sense of power, control, authority, but also responsibility. Um, I think it confirms, not that you didn't already know this, but I think it's going to make it very obvious. Um that your decisions make a difference, that your actions, that your sense of responsibility, your maturity really, affects not only yourself and your, your immediate environment, but the whole world, the entire cosmos, right, is affected by your decisions. So I think it puts an extra weight on the things that you do with your life, the decisions that you make, no matter how trivial, it's almost like everything takes on a supreme importance for you. All right? And that's a tremendous responsibility. And I think the Calla Lily says it. Reawaken and then stand stronger. Stand more confident in your decisions. Because if they have this serious weight to them, then you're going to make sure that they are the right decisions. And that, I think, helps us to stand stronger, right? Like the calla lily. We don't have any doubt as to the correctness of our, of our actions. Yeah. This is very, very nice. Let's look at the mystery card. Okay. Um, I have a feeling of what it is, but I don't, I don't know for sure. I'm kind of nervous about uh, putting my prediction out there. If you want to put a prediction down in the comments, go ahead and do it now. 
then we're going to reveal this, pause the video if you need more time. I think this can be none other than the star card, your power card. That's, that's the only thing that I'm feeling here is that is your power, right? And maybe it'll be another two of wands. It could be any other kind of fire energy, I guess. But um, I'm hoping that this is really about your spiritual activation, stepping into wholeness, stepping into completion, stepping into your power, your destiny, going through this doorway, which again might be difficult. There is the star. And we get to ring the bell. This is your power card. This is, uh, this is your moment. This is now, I think, what I was saying earlier about how your destiny seemed way out there. Now, it's up close and personal, and you have to seize it. You have to go through the doorway to claim your destiny. Here is that star card. And the star card is not just about kind of becoming activated uh, or receiving the, the, the blessing, the bliss, the spirit, uh, but it's about extending it out horizontally in your environment. And that's why I think the Three of Cups and the Knight of Cups are very important together. Okay? We're receiving the divine energy and we have to then express it and give it. This is really nice. Really, this is big. This is big. Uh, we're going to do an extended too. If you want to stick around, click on the link in the corner. New readings for Aquarius every Monday and Thursday, unless we do a bonus reading here, here or there. Uh, Aquarius, I want you to know that you're the most important part of Dove and Serpent Tarot. I thank you, and I love you, and we're all in this together.